So today we're going to learn how to connect an Emerson PLC to a Unidrive M700 over Profinet. But before we do that, I need to let you know that I've made this video twice. This one's the detailed version. I hope you enjoy. Today we're going to be setting up an Emerson PLC and have it talk to the Unidrive M700 over the protocol called Profinet. But before we go and set up the PLC side, we need to set up the Unidrive side. You might ask, why is this? Well, it's because the Unidrive comes defaulted for Ethernet IP as the protocol that it's using. And we need to switch that over from Ethernet IP to Profinet. Now there's two ways we can do this. We could use the keypad on the drive, or we can use the Connect software. Now I'm going to use the Connect software because it also helps you set up the Digitex HD750 as well because the Digitex doesn't come with a keypad by default. And so this is the approach I'm going to show you today. So as you can see, I have the Connect software in front of us open. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a project. Now, the way I like to do it is I come up here to New Project from Network Scan. And then it's going to ask us, how are we going to build this project? What network? Is it RTU or is it Ethernet? Um, I just like to hit this Scan All Network. And so now what it's going to do, it's going to look at the Ethernet network. It's going to look at the RTU network. And it's going to find all the devices on that network. Now, normally when you're doing this, you'll find lots of drives, not just a single drive. And some drives might be set up and some may not be. In our case, our drive is not set up. And we know that because all of the drives that are not set up will be in this yellow square right here. Okay, now we only have one here. And all of the drives that are already set up will be shown below here. As you can see, there's nothing down here. Okay, now there's a couple things I want to show you. The first thing is this wink button. The wink button allows you to see which drive in your system you're actually trying to set up. Okay, and because the drive isn't set up, it also gives you this configuration button. If the drive was already set up, it won't show you this. So we're going to click on configure, and then this window will open up. As you can see, it's suggesting an IP address of 192.168.1.1. This is because my computer is also set up with this type of IP address. And you can see it right here. It says, based on my computer, these are the IP addresses that you could use, right? Now, if you change this IP address to something that's already used, you'll see this check mark disappear. That's indicating that you can't use that particular one because it's already used. And for this video, um, since the PLC is actually going to set up the IP address for reals, the only thing we need to do is just get a temporary IP address so that our Connect software can actually connect to it. So I'm just going to hit Apply. And you notice that the yellow box disappeared. And the only thing left is the actual drive down here. Now that I have my drives selected right here, I'm going to create a project with all the selected drives. Now the Connect software built us a project based on the drives we have selected. And we need to go online with the drive. Come here to Ethernet. And come all the way down to parameter listings. Click the little carrot. And this list of menus will open up for different types of settings we want to change. We want to click on Ethernet configuration. This is the basic settings for the Ethernet module that's built into the drive. And you can see that it has the IP address of 192.168.1.1, just like we set it up to. Now, here is the parameter that's important. As you can see, it's set up as Ethernet IP. And what we need to do is we need to switch it to Profinet. Okay. Now you'll notice that this parameter hasn't immediately changed to Profinet. That's because it only takes effect after we do a save and reset. So I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And you can do it from over here too. Come to the Ethernet tab. 
and hit this reset. This tells the Ethernet module to reset and to use all of the new settings that we put into the Ethernet module. Before you do this, a lot of people will like to set up the motor and stuff like that, but we're not going to cover that in this video. Hit the reset. We can see we lost connection for a little bit. And if we come back to our Ethernet tab, right? So now you can actually see that it is using Profinet as its active protocol. Now let's set up the PLC. I'm going to be using the PAC Machine Edition software used to program all of Emerson's PLCs. And I have an RX3i processor right here that has, has a rack, a power supply, a CPU, a Profinet controller, and several other I.O. modules. Over Profinet, we need to connect to different devices, of course. And Profinet uses a concept of a name for their devices. So there's this utility in this software called the Profinet DCP, or Discovery Configuration Protocol. So if we open it up, then I'm going to select the network on my computer that we're going to use to program the PLC, which of course is my hardwire Ethernet. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually have the PLC look for all of the devices on the Profinet network. To do this, I need to move the cable from the CPU of the PLC down into the Profinet module. And now that we're connected to that network, we can simply push the refresh device list. And this will go out and find all of the Profinet devices on this network. So I have two devices here. The one on the bottom is the Profinet controller, this card right here. You can see that the part number matches both over in the hardware configuration and over here in the device type. The other device on this network is this FFEV2 Profinet. And what this is saying is that this is the Ethernet that's built into the M700 drive. Now you could simply add Profinet modules to the drive as well, and then the software would show as a Profinet as a name because you would be talking to a Profinet module in the drive and not the factory fit module in the drive. You can also see a couple other things like, for example, it has no name and no IP address. If you're using this tool and you have multiple devices out on the network, one of the things you can do is click on this identify device and this will cause this window to open up. It will cause the selected device in the list above to blink so that we can identify it out on the wall or wherever it's located. It also gives you the MAC address for convenience. So now if you click on stop identify, you'll see that the blinking lights over here are stopped. Now if you click on edit device, we can now assign this device a name. So we're going to give this device a name of drive01. Profinet has several rules for their names. The rules for Profinet names, all of the names must be lowercase. You can have numbers, but you can't lead off with a number. You can also have a dash in the name. No other characters are supported. No uppercase, no period, no spaces. So this is a valid drive name. So if we type an invalid name in, the text will turn red, letting us know that it's not valid. If the name is valid, we can hit set device name. Down here at the bottom, it will let you know if it was able to change the name successfully or not. In this case, it successfully changed. There is no IP address in the device yet. We'll sign that later with the processor. So let's close that and finish up the setup. So now let's go back over to the PLC, in particularly the Profinet controller, and let's add this device we just found to that controller. So we need to right click, come down here to add IO device. So this is going to open up the Profinet device catalog, and this is going to show all of the devices this PLC knows how to talk to. If your device is not in this list, then you need to go over to this GSDML file button and load the GSDML from that manufacturer. In this case, it would need to be the Unidrive M700 GSDML file from Control Techniques. I've already added this file, 
And looking at the name, you might notice that it doesn't say Unidrive M700, but says Unidrive M600 through 800. And that makes sense because the 700 is in between the 600 and 800. So it's like they're using the same file for three different drives. Also, sometimes if you open these up, you'll see multiple options for drives. But in this case, again, it's a single drive for multiple drives. So we're just going to click on this one and use it in our project. You can see that it's added the device underneath slot 3, which is our Profinet controller. And it has the default name of SI Profinet version 2. So now if we click on the device, down in the inspector window, we can see a bunch of properties. We don't want to use the default name given by the GSDML file. We want to use the name that we have chosen for our device. And so we need to edit the device name. As you can see, the IP address is 192.168.1.1. We want to change it to the IP address that we really want the drive to have. And so we are going to change it to 192.168.1.100. The next thing we're going to do is configure the data that's going between the PLC and the drive. To do that, we need to change the module lists. So what we're going to do is right click on the drive, which has now got the name Drive01. And we're going to come down and click on Change Module List. This brings up a little window that allows us to select our inputs and outputs and put them in the table on the left side. If you're familiar with the Unidrive M700, the top right window might look familiar to you as it's got the same menu structure as inside the drive. For example, we got menu 1. And please note that there are inputs and outputs here. And this is how you decide whether you're going to read or write to that data. It depends on which one of these branches you open up. Let's open up the inputs and you'll see a whole bunch of parameters from the Unidrive M700. Now the question is, is what does it mean by input? Well if we select one of these it will be an input to the PLC. In other words the PLC will read this data out of the drive. All right. And so if we would have selected an output this would mean that the PLC would be sending it out of the PLC and writing it to the drive. So basically, to set up your PLC, we just browse through each of these menus and add the stuff we want to your PLC as inputs and outputs. Now in the Unidrive M700, there's these menus, menu 18, 19, and 20. These menus are just empty memory spaces that have no definition. And because of that, we can easily use them for whatever we want. We're going to use them today to demonstrate that we can talk between the PLC and the drive. Before I show that, I want to let you know that they can be very useful in that you might want the PLC to talk to other things other than the drive. Maybe you want it to talk to a Power Tools module or an MCI 210 to write code inside the drive that's offloading a lot of the work for the PLC. Or we can use these network modules and use this memory space to convert Profinet that the PLC has to maybe DeviceNet or Profibus or any other network module you can snap into the drive. I'll talk more about this in a different video, but for now just know that it's there and we are going to use it for today's demonstration. All right, so let's actually do this demonstration. So what I'm going to do is going to open up menu 18, use an input to the PLC. We're going to find something called menu 18.11, which is menu 18 parameter 11, and we're going to add it to our list. You can see now that it's on our list. Now let's go add menu 19.11 as an output to our list. Now that we have added menu 19, parameter 11 as an output, you can see that we both have an input and an output now that we can play with. And so we can close this window and go on to the next step. One other thing we need to do in the configuration tool is look at the addresses that have been assigned by the PLC for these data exchanges. The first input word from 18.11 has been mapped to analog input 1, right? We could change that if we wanted, but we're going to leave it alone. 
and this other word, which is an output, you can see it's mapped to AQ001, which is analog output 1. We'll leave that alone as well. But now we need to connect back to the PLC. So we need to unplug the cable from the Profinet communication and plug it into the PLC. Now we're going to connect to the PLC. It is connected. Down at the bottom, it shows us that we're in programmer mode, that the PLC is enabled, and that the configuration is not equal because we've made some changes. You can also see from this icon up above that there's an X through it, and this shows that there's a difference between the PLC and our program. We need to stop the processor in order to download the new configuration to the PLC. So the processor needs to be stopped in order to do this. So now we're going to download and start. And you see this menu that popped up? This lets us select exactly what we want to download. So we're going to download everything. We get some feedback down here at the bottom, which will show us eventually that it's complete and hopefully with no errors. So we have no errors. So we put the processor in a run. And now in the bottom right corner, it shows that our configuration is equal and our logic is equal and the little red X is gone. So now to see if we're actually communicating with the drive, I've set up something called a reference view table. And in this custom table, you can see the two address locations we're exchanging from the PLC. Analog input word 1 is right here, and it goes all the way up to analog input 10 over here. And this right here is analog output 1, all the way up to analog output 10 over here. As I said before, this analog input 1 is coming from the drive from menu 18 parameter 11. And so let's go over to the connect software and actually change the value. Now that we're back on the connect software, we can see that the IP address is wrong and that it's not connected. So we need to change the IP address to match what the PLC set it to. So let's change it to 192.168.100. Now that it has the correct IP address, we can simply go online. Now that we're online, let's go down to menu 18. Parameter 11 and change this value to 1, 2, 3, 4. And now we should be able to see this on the PLC side. So back on the PLC software, we can see in our analog input 1 memory location that the value of 1, 2, 3, 4 did show up. So that's very good, right? Now to test that the data works in the opposite direction, right, sending data to the drive, we're going to go to our analog output, and we're going to change it to 5, 6, 7, 8. And so this value should show up in menu 19, parameter 11. Let's go see. Now that we're back on the Connect software, let's go look in menu 19, parameter 11 to see if we received the data. We most definitely can see the value of 5, 6, 7, 8. So now we've proven that we can communicate both directions from an Emerson PLC to a Unidrive M700. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video or you found it useful, please subscribe or share it with somebody. And I'll see you next time.